His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Tsakhir Palace senior royal family members, the Speaker of the Representatives Council, the Chairman of the Shura Council, senior officials, families and royal endurance team members who were honored to greet His Majesty the King.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه أصحاب السمو أصحاب المعالي والسعادة أيها السيدات والسادة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته يشرفنا أن نرحب بكم أجمل ترحيب في هذا اللقاء الطيب وخير ما نبدأ به The began with recitation of verses from the Holy Quran القرآن الكريم يتلوها على مسامعنا القارئ علي صلاح عمر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم محمد رسول الله والذين معه أشداء على الكفار وحماء بينهم تراهم ركعا سجدا يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا سيماهم في وجوههم من أثر السجود ذلك مثلهم في التوراة ومثلهم في الإنجيل كزرع أخرج شطأه فآزره فاستغلظ فاستوى على سوقه يعجب الزرع ليغيظ بهم الكفار وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات منهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما صدق الله العظيم His Majesty the King then delivered the following speech. الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه بإلقاء كلمة بهذه المناسبة. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأهلا وسهلا بالجميع في رحاب هذا الصرح. العريق الذي نعتز بمكانته ورمزيته الوطنية الرفيعة وبدورها المشهود في رعاية إرث بلادنا الإنساني الذي لا يقدر بثمن ويسرنا في مثل هذه اللقاءات الأخوية أن نعرب عن بالغ تقديرنا واعتزازنا بالإنجازات المتواصلة والمفرحة في كافة الميادين الوطنية والمحافل الدولية والمعبرة عن روح التفاني والإخلاص التي يبدع أبناء وبنات البحرين في تجسيدها وهم يلبون نداء الواجب الوطني ونبارك للبحرين الانتصار التاريخي الكبير الذي سجله الفريق الملكي للقدرة في البطولة الفرنسية الأخيرة بقيادة فارس العالم الابن العزيز سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد الخليفة حفظه الله ونحيي فيه هذه العزيمة الوطنية الصلبة لبلوغ قمم التفوق ونهنئه على التنظيم الاستثنائي في إدارة وتوجيه جهود فرسان البحرين وما نتج عن ذلك من نتائج مشرفة أسعدتنا جميعا وختاما ننتهز هذه الفرصة الطيبة لنشيد بالإدارة المتميزة للانتخابات التكميلية 
بمحافظة المحرق لعضوية مجلس النواب وبإتمام هذه المهمة الوطنية بسلاسة ونجاح تام استعداداً لأعمال دور الانعقاد المقبل للمجلس الوطني والله الموفق لطريق الخير والفلاح والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جهد طيب من الفريق الله يطول عمرك ما قصرتوا والله طال عمرك الكل بذل جهد عالي يا رب طول عمرك عشان بس نحافظ على هالرايه ذي يا رب طول عمرك نعم الحمد لله طال عمرك وفي ديره بعيده وارض غير ارضكم نعم حتى لو قريب طال عمرك نعطيه نفس الاداء وان الله وفق بالسبق الله طول عمرك الحمد لله وان الله ما اعطانا السبق الله طول عمرك فبشركم ادائهم بيكون مشرف دائما ان شاء الله ما قصرتوا على العهد ان شاء الله ان شاء الله بالخير ولا غير الله والله شباب البحرين مبهج الحمد لله يعني الحقيقه النتائج طيبه انا بس في هالظروف التوجيه المهم ان الناس تعلم هالشباب على الخير وعلى السلام وعلى الحياه الطيبه والحياه الكريمه وبعدين هم يكونون ما في شك اقوى الناس للدفاع عن ما ورثوا ما نعكس الامور ان الشباب يتعلمون على لا سمح الله العنف والحروب مثل ما نشوف في الدول لا يجب التربيه تكون تربيه خير وسلام وتعايش ومحبه ولا شك اذا اثبتت هذه المبادئ بدافع عن مجتمعها بدافع عن وليس العكس والفروسية والتعارف على الشعوب في كل بلد هذا شيء طيب يعني شباب من البحرين يتعرفون على شباب من أوروبا من أمريكا من أفريقيا من آسيا ويتواصلون وياهم على كل حال مبروكين وقواكم الحمد لله أنا شباب نطاع عمرك نهجهم من نهجكم الله يطول الله يسلمك إن شاء الله After that, the Royal Endurance team greeted His Majesty, who congratulated them and praised their efforts and commitment to honoring Bahrain in various regional, Arab and international forums. His Majesty wished the following continued success in their future endeavors. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, Dr. Khalid Ahmed Mohammed Hassan, Director of the Royal Endurance team, Dr. Tariq Ali Al Amin, the Assistant Director of the Royal Endurance team, Jafar Hassan Mirza Abdul Nabi, Salman Isa Salman Radi, Uthman Abdul Jalil Al Awadi. Hamad Isa Al-Janahi, Sarhan Hamid Dakhil Al-Anizi, Sami Ibrahim Al-Haddad, Dr. Samir Ibrahim Muhammad Al-Gharib, Dr. Faras Dhul-Fiqar Nuruddin, Dr. Salman Khalid Ahmed, Dr. Abdul Rahman Muhammad Al-Zayed, Muhammad Abdul Hamid Muhammad Hassan Al-Hashmi, Abdullah Khiyam Al-Ansari, Ahmed Ibrahim Al-Disi, Yahya Jalal Ahmed Abed, Abdullah Ibrahim Faqih, Ibrahim Muhammad Sharida, Hamad Habib Al-Majid, Muhammad Ali Al-Gallaf, Isa Abdul Rahman Sharida, Muhammad Yahya Al Tug, and Ahmed Fathi Shaheen. For their part, the attendees expressed their honor and pride in meeting His Majesty the King as well as their gratitude for His Majesty's commitment to strengthening communication ties with all Bahraini citizens. They also appreciated His Majesty the King's constant keenness to the interests and issues of citizens and his efforts to secure a decent life for them. They expressed their pride in the leadership of His Majesty the King, the comprehensive development process of the Kingdom of Bahrain, and the significant progress made during His Majesty the King's prosperous era in the march of modern development. The attendees prayed to Allah the Almighty to protect His Majesty and grant him health, happiness, and the Kingdom's further progress and prosperity under His Majesty's leadership. The Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, attaches great importance to national talents in various fields, especially sports. His Majesty's belief in the importance of youth and their role in building the future 
was the impetus for providing an incubating environment for creativity and excellence and providing the necessary support for distinguished and talented people to realize their ambitions and aspirations. Today we have a very uh, successful achievement with His Highness Sheikh Nasser and the awarding for today and the partnership of His Majesty is uh, mean a, a lot for us as a sports and athletes in Bahrain. Uh, the tendency of uh, Crown Prince in France and Mombazir and support his brother Sheikh Nasser mean a lot and this is that our leadership they are doing a lot of support for the sport in Bahrain. We're looking for the, another achievement, hopefully, uh, in the future with other sports. Paying attention to local and international excellence in various fields is an investment in the future of the kingdom and has made the kingdom occupy advanced positions and podiums regionally and internationally with its continuous achievements. Today is a, is a historic day that is registered in, in, in the history of, bah of our kingdom, uh, of Bahrain, and f in, in, in the world of being the first um, endurance uh, rider to get two times uh, the world championship that has never been done before. Um, in our role as medical, we were there to monitor the health and well-being for His Highness and for all the team as well. And uh, to us, this is not just uh, um, a duty, it's also a lesson in commitment and a lesson on how to achieve and how to be the best in the world. So we are very proud uh, for having such character and leader in our country and, uh, and I hope this will be a start for future leaders and future uh, athletes to come in his, in his role. Celebrating historical and sporting achievements that are the pride of every Bahraini citizen contributes to creating a competitive spirit between different fields and as an inspiring incentive to achieve more regional and international achievements. Today is a special day uh, greeting and shaking His Majesty uh, hands for the achievements that we have achieved in France, World Championship for the second time. It's a big responsibility that uh, we have now to achieve more and more for our Kingdom of Bahrain. The royal patronage and unlimited support of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa resulted in a great historical victory recorded by the Royal Endurance Team in the recent World Endurance Championship in France and enhanced the Kingdom's name at the global sports map. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and Chairman of Bahrain Economic Development Board, the EDB, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the EDB's Board of Directors meeting at the Palace. His Royal Highness commended the EDB's Board Economic Outcomes through its cooperation and collaboration with the Kingdom's government agencies and the private sector, emphasizing that their efforts are highly valued by all. He emphasized that creating lucrative employment and business opportunities is crucial for attracting investments and supporting economic growth. His Royal Highness noted the significance of Team Bahrain's joint efforts in providing more opportunities for citizens in line with the Kingdom's goals of comprehensive development, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He underscored the importance of maintaining Team Bahrain's momentum in advancing economic growth by strengthening public-private partnerships that deliver vital development projects, ultimately achieving shared economic objectives that benefit everyone. He welcomed the newly Bahrain ADB's appointed board members, expressing his best wishes for their success in achieving the ADB's far-reaching economic goals. His Royal Highness also commended the efforts and contributions of the former board of members during their tenure. The ADB reviewed its achievements in the first half of 2024 and outlined strategies in attracting investments across priority sectors. The Minister of Sustainable Development and Chief Executive of Bahrain ADB, Noor bin Ali Lakhlaif, then delivered a presentation briefing the board members of the direct investments secured by the board. These investments totaled 399.2 million BD from 62 local and international investment projects with 40% representing new ventures and 60% being expansion projects. The presentation highlighted that the manufacturing sector accounted for the largest share of diversified direct investments followed by the tourism and financial services sectors. These cumulative investments are projected to create more than 5,400 employment opportunities within the next three years. Key success stories across priority sectors were also presented, including investments from India-based semiconductor manufacturer Polymatech, Singapore Gulf Bank, at home grown tech company Array, Amana Healthcare, and the University Strathclyde. The board also reviewed a breakdown of ADB's extensive international investor outreach efforts across key target markets. 
Representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, along with senior officials and members of EDB's Board of Directors, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and Chairman of the Economic Development Board, the EDB, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with former members of EDB's Board of Directors at Qadibiya Palace. The former members include advisor to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for Economic Affairs, Dr. Hassan bin Abdullah Fakhro, Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Mohammed bin Thamar Al Kabi, Farooq Yusuf Al Mayyad, and Fatma Isa Ibrahim. His Royal Highness highlighted Bahraini citizens' efforts across all sectors and their commitment to advancing the Kingdom's comprehensive development. His Royal Highness commended Team Bahrain's efforts in serving the country and furthering its development to meet its wide-ranging goals. He expressed gratitude to the former board members, noting their efforts in furthering ADB's goals during their tenure. The former board members expressed gratitude for His Royal Highness's commitment to supporting the Bahrain's national development and workforce. The ADB's former board members also wished the newly appointed members success in performing their duties. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. The envoy of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa offered his condolences to His Highness the Crown Prince of Kuwait, Sheikh Sabah Khalid Al Hamad Al Sabah, following the passing of the late Sheikh Jabir Mubarak Al Hamad Al Sabah. This came during His Highness the Crown Prince of Kuwait's reception of the advisor to His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa, and Director General of the Royal Family Council, Sheikh Salman bin Khalid Al Khalifa, and the accompanying delegation who conveyed the condolences of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to His Highness the Crown Prince of Kuwait and their Highnesses, the Sheikhs, and His Highness the Prime Minister, Sheikh Ahmed Abdullah Al Ahmed Al Sabah, and Al Sabah family. The Minister of Interior, Chairman of the Follow-up Committee for the Implementation of the National Plan to Promote the Spirit of Belonging and the, to the Nation and Reinforce the Values of Nationalism, Bahrainuna, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, chaired the committee's meeting in the presence of the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf, the Minister of Tourism, the Minister of Information and the Minister of Education. The Minister welcomed the new members and noted that their efforts will constitute a qualitative addition to the committee's work and expressed his thanks to the ministers who participated in the committee's membership before and their constructive role in all aspects of work. He stressed that Bahrainuna, which has been launched more than five years ago, is entering a new phase of national action thanks to the patronage of His Majesty as the national plan includes advanced societal initiatives where Bahrainis remain the focus of His Majesty's attention, noting that the authentic approach represents an extension of the process of good governance, tolerance and firm national constants with its historical and cultural heritage passed on from generations to generations. The Minister praised the decision of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to reconstitute the committee, noting that His Royal Highness's support has a positive impact in enhancing the initiatives of the committee and putting them into practice through community partnership and integrated national efforts. He said that strengthening national belonging extends the national loyalty, which is based on love for the country under the leadership of His Majesty the King, and protecting its social fabric within a framework of preserving national gains and commitment to national discipline by respecting laws. The committee then began discussing its agenda and reviewed the developments of the national plans while Markham Gulf delivered a presentation that included the programs of the media and awareness campaign that will be launched over the next two years to promote community values and support the Bahrainuna initiative. The Minister of Tourism then briefed the committee on the details of the ministry's initiative related to the history and landmarks of the Hwar Islands, while the Minister of Information briefed on the details of the Bahraini Camera Initiative, documentary films, and the Minister of Education briefed on the initiatives implemented by the ministry. The committee also reviewed the report by the Ministry of Youth Affairs, including the summary of the 2030 Youth City and a presentation on the volunteering platform. The committee instructed to launch an extensive media campaign in the coming weeks, highlighting the objectives of the national plan and its, initi its initiatives and the efforts to sustain this ambitious national project. The Minister of Interior directed the Executive Office to follow scientific and thoughtful methods in dealing with initiatives and building on what has been achieved through a national partnership. He added that Bahrainuna is witnessing renewed stages of development from the era of digital transformation in 23 to the enhancing of working plan during the next phase 2024 to 2027, which includes the enhancement of communication with the youth through digital channels and platforms. 
The Minister thanked the members of the committee for their keenness to communicate and coordinate on everything that would develop the initiatives of Bahrainina and achieve the desired goals for the benefit of the country and its people. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, participated in the coordination ministerial meeting hosted by Jordan and chaired by the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates, Dr. Ayman Safadi. The meeting was attended by a number of foreign ministers who are members of the Extraordinary Arab Islamic Joint Ministerial Committee on Gaza, chaired by Saudi Arabia's Minister of Foreign Affairs, His Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud, and comprising of the Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and Immigrants of Palestine, the Foreign Minister of Turkey, the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs of Qatar the Deputy Foreign Minister of Egypt, the Secretary General of the Arab League, and the Secretary General of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. The meeting discussed the committee's diplomatic efforts uh, to reach a permanent ceasefire in the Gaza Strip, provide protection for civilians, and accelerate the delivery of humanitarian and relief aid. They also discussed the necessary steps to revive the peace process in the region to implement the two-state solution and end the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, support efforts to promote international recognition of an independent Palestinian state, and coordinate positions towards diplomatic action in the next phase to mobilize international support for the Palestinian cause. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, highlighted the importance of qualified national cadres in attracting investment in the financial sector. During the graduation ceremony of the 2024 batch of chartered financial analysts, the CFA certificate holders, he emphasized that Bahrain, keen to prepare digital infrastructure and support financial technology based on creativity and innovation. He added that the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, is committed to creating more opportunities that enhance the scientific and practical skills of national cadres, particularly in the financial and economic fields. During the ceremony, the minister honored the graduates and presented them th with graduation certificates, congratulating them on their academic achievements and wishing them continued success in their field of work. He highlighted the role of specialized professional financial institutions in building ca capacities and acquiring basic knowledge and skills for cadres working in the financial and banking fields, contributing to Bahrain's position as a leading financial center for comprehensive and sustainable economic growth. The CBB Governor Khalid Ibrahim Hamidan praised the Bahrain Investment Professional Society for doubling their number of holders of the CFA certificate. He emphasized the importance of these efforts in developing investment standards and enhancing the investment environment of Bahrain. The chairperson of the board of directors of the National Bank of Bahrain, Hale Yatim, expressed her pride in supporting these initiatives aiming to enhance national competencies and professionalism in the financial sector. The president of the Bahrain Society of Investment Professionals, Ziba Majid, Majid Askar, expressed gratitude to the Minister of Finance for attending the graduation ceremony and all partners and supporters for contributed to the success of the CFA program. The Minister of Social Development, Osama al Asfour, stressed the keenness to continue enhancing the quality and efficiency of government work to support the gains of the comprehensive development process under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the follow of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He affirmed that the Ministry has been working to implement the directives of His Royal Highness to develop 500 services in 24 government entities in order to provide high quality services. He said that the Ministry has completed the development of 20 services, including five for people with disabilities, five for families and children, and four services for various communities groups, including the elderly. He added that three services have been developed to enhance support for NGOs, most notably the service of requesting the approval of signatures to activate a bank account, in addition to two services related to financial support for beneficiaries, namely the service of registration for disability allowance and social insurance, in addition to the service of family education programs related to family counseling. He emphasized that this development came to achieve a number of objectives, most notably reducing the required documents by 50% for 15 services and reducing the level agreement for 19 services by a minimum of 25%, in addition to reducing the steps of providing seven services to a maximum of four steps, as well as standardize the information of 17 services published in all channels, while the number of eight services transformation reached six services. And to speak more about this, we were joined earlier over the phone by the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Social Development, Sahar Rashid al Manai, who elaborated further. In line with the directives of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to develop 500 services across 24 government entities. As the Ministry's mission aimed to provide developmental and social services to different segments of the society, 
We have developed and re-engineered a total of 20 services, and the key developed uh, services include reducing the time frame for social assistance approval processes from 30 days to 10 days, which has helped speed up the decision-making process. Similarly, reducing the time frame for disability allowance approval process from 30 days to 20 days, in addition to reducing the requirement uh, of documents by 50%. Moreover, we have the service of elderly assistance devices, as the approval time for the request has been significantly reduced from 30 days to 5 days only. We have also launched a group of e-forms for a range of other services alongside reducing the processing time and required document for similar uh, services for people with disabilities and the elderly. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Yasser Ahmedian, participated in the 6th Arab for Water Forum in Abu Dhabi. The minister attended the joint opening of the forum, which emphasized the importance of achieving water security and self-sufficiency in the region to meet the growing demand for water, increase water productivity, and improve water quality for its role in achieving social and economic development. On the sidelines of his participation in this dialogue, the minister stressed the importance of holding the 6th Arab Water Forum at the current time, especially in light of increasing consumption and climate change, which calls for all parties to work together to develop develop sustainable solutions and rational policies that ensure the optimal use of natural resources. The military hospital micro school was opened in the children's wing and the children's clinic at the hospital in the presence of Her Highness Sheikha Hassa bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the wife of the chairman of the board of directors of Injaz Bahrain, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, director general of the office of the wife of His Majesty the King, Sheikha Maran bin Isa Al Khalifa, technical assistant to the commander of the Royal Medical Services, Brigadier Dr. Muhammad Ahmed Muhammad Ahmed, and vice chairwoman of the board of trustees of the Bahrain Trust Foundation, Dr. Fatin Ibrahim Al Ayyad, Her Highness Sheikha Hassa praised the support of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, to continue education for all in all circumstances, especially sick children, whose presence in the hospital may affect their academic achievement. She also noted the constructive cooperation between the Royal Medical Services Administration and the Bahrain Trust Foundation in providing the appropriate environment for students by allocating spaces equipped with the latest technologies and modern educational means. Her Highness said that the continuity of learning for sick children contributes greatly to enhancing their psychological state, which speeds up their recovery. It also contributes to giving their families a sense of reassurance about the children's academic future, stressing that the success of this experience in the military hospital will inspire many health institutions in Bahrain to follow this constructive step. Brigadier Dr. Sheikh Fahad bin Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa said that the opening of the hospital school comes from the keenness to improve the experience of child patients during their stay in the hospital whose health conditions were an obstacle to continuing their basic education. Chairwoman of the Board of Trustees of the Bahrain Trust Foundation, Dr. Fatma Mohamed Leblouchi, expressed pride in the opening of the third hospital school affiliated with the foundation to represent the cooperation and partnership with the government institutions in Bahrain. In continuation of developing programs and services that are compatible with the treatment directed to child patients during their stay in the hospital, the opening of the military hospital school and the children's ward and the children's clinic in the hospital came to be a suitable environment for child patients while receiving treatment in the hospital to practice their daily activities and follow up on their lessons and homework, which reflects positively on the course of treatment and does not affect their academic achievement. The objectives of the school include taking care of academic achievement and the curriculum in a way that suits patients and their capabilities, in addition to providing psychological support in all its forms to students and parents to help them adapt to their health and treatment status. The Bahrain Trust Foundation continues its journey in supporting education in all its forms through the Many Schools Project in Hospitals, which aims primarily to be suitable and appropriate for children and keep pace with the latest modern technologies to bring joy to the hearts of children and their families while they spend a long time in the hospital during the period of receiving treatment. In line with the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to develop 500 services across 24 government entities, the Under Secretary for Nationality, Passports and Residence Affairs, the NBRA, at the Ministry of Interior, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdul Rahman Al Khalifa, emphasized the ongoing efforts to enhance the streamline and NBRA services. These efforts aim to meet the needs of both citizens and residents while adhering to the highest quality standards. Sheikh Hisham highlighted the NBRA's 
collaborate, to collaboration with the Ministerial Committee for Information and Communications Technology, chaired by the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rajab bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. Through this partnership, nine new services have been successfully developed for citizens and residents with two additional services currently in progress. The initiative focuses on simplifying procedures, tr transitioning to fully electronic submissions, and improving service quality efficiency and its contributions to economic growth. The process of developing government services aims to reduce the application steps and rely on submitting applications electronically to achieve the e-transformation plan, improve the services provided, increase their efficiency, and promote economic growth. More in this report. The Nationality, Passports and Resident Affairs, the NPRA, is keen to launch initiatives to further develop its services in line with the leadership's vision for digital transformation under the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to further develop 500 services in 24 government entities. The NPRA continues to work to develop and further improve its services in accordance with the highest quality standards to meet the needs of citizens and residents. The development of these services comes as a leap within the administration's e-transformation plan, which has been developed by 100% and reduces the number of documents by 50%, saving time and effort in completing processes without the need to visit service centers. The Director General of the Institute of Public Administration, Dr. Sheikh Rana bin Isa bin Daij Al Khalifa, affirmed the Institute's commitment to further developing government leaders to enhance administrative development across many sectors and achieve Bahrain's comprehensive development goals. The recent event organized by the Institute was attended by the CEO of Government Hospitals, Dr. Maryam Al Jalahma, and members of the 32nd batch of Qiyadat, a program designed for public sector managers as part of the National Leadership Development Program. Dr. Sheikh Rana emphasized the importance of leveraging national leaders' experiences and best practices through dialogue sessions offered to Qiyadat participants aiming to strengthen their leadership capabilities and contribute to advancing government strategic work in Bahrain. Dr. Jalahma reiterated Bahrain's dedication to investing in national talent across various sectors, recognizing that these leaders are crucial for driving development and institutional progress in the kingdom. Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture Ministry Under Secretary Engineer Sheikh Mohammed bin Ahmed Al Khalifa confirmed that work is ongoing to increase the intensity of afforestation in Bahrain's governorates according to the program set within the National Afforestation Plan. This came during the field tour conducted by the Under Secretary for Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture, accompanied by the Northern Municipality Director General Engineer Lamia Yusuf Al Fadala and Ministry officials to review the Sheikh Hamad Avenue afforestation project in Hamad Town and the Northern Governorate. The Undersecretary for Municipalities Affairs indicated that the number of trees planted in the first and second phases amounted to 8,300 trees, while the Ministry launched the third phase, which aims to plant, to plant 2,500 trees, bringing the final number targeted by the Ministry in planting Sheikh Hamad Street in Hamad Town to 10,800 along 18 kilometers. He explained that the Ministry of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture is continuing to implement its programs and initiatives in coordination with various relevant authorities to achieve the desired goals. The Undersecretary of the Ministry of Municipalities Affairs added that the Ministry has developed an integrated plan to increase the number of trees and intersections and public streets to expand afforestation projects in various governorates of Bahrain. The Kingdom of Bahrain ranked 18th globally among the top-ranked countries in the e-government development index according to the UN e-government report 2024 issued by the UN Department for Economic and Social Affairs. In terms of the electronic content of information and services index, the results show that the Kingdom has made very high progress in this indicator. This ranking is a result of the Information and e-government authorities' endeavors to develop the content of Bahrain's national portal and other electronic channels.
An open meeting held between representatives of Gulf Insurance Agencies, employers in Bahrain and GCC employees. This coincided with the holding of the 59th meeting of the GCC Technical Committee for Retirement and Social Insurance Agencies. During the meeting, inquiries from citizens and Gulf nationals ensured the unified system for extending insurance protection and their employers in Bahrain were answered regarding contributions and other matters related to extending insurance protection. The delegation of the Parliamentary Division of Bahrain participated in a virtual dialogue session organized by the Interparliamentary Union on Peace and Democracy, chaired by First Deputy Speaker of the Shura Council, Jamal Fakhro. During this session, which included experts and parliamentarians, speakers emphasized that the electoral process is integral to a comprehensive strategy for building democracy, strengthening institutions, and establishing justice and quality. They noted that elections can pave the way for sustainable peace and genuine political transformation. Shura Council's second deputy chairman, Dr. Jihad Abdullah Al Fadl, affirmed the council's participation in the fourth Eurasian Women's Forum in Russia following His Majesty the King's official visit to Russia in May. Dr. Fadl emphasized the Shura Council's interest in participating in the crucial parliamentary forum organized by the Federal Council of the Federal Assembly of Russia and the Parliamentary Assembly of the Commonwealth of Independent States, highlighting the council's commitment to implementing the aspirations of His Majesty the King.